I think we're live with that. Um, <laughs> Hi, if uh, anybody can hear me, could you type yes in the chat box, please, so I know the sound is coming through? Hi, if anybody's watching now, could you just type um, yes in the chat box if you can hear me? Thanks. I'm just checking to see what the sound is like. So if anyone can hear the sound, just let me know. I'm just getting ready to do this live stream of a cloud tutorial so I'll just keep on repeating a few words just until three o'clock when I'm due to start just to check everything's working okay hello to whoever's just joined I can see I've got two people watching if you can hear my voice and it's clear could you type yes in the chat box please just to know that everything's working okay I think there's a little bit of a time delay in between when I'm moving on camera and then when, and when I'm speaking. So I'll just wait a little while until the time, um, until things sort of catch up. But I'm aware that I'll just need to work a bit slower so that people can... Um, catch up with what I'm doing okay so so please type yes if you can hear me I'll keep on talking so that those of you who are listening at the moment can can hear me. Okay. <coughs> I'm going to keep just chatting for a little while and um, hope that the sound uh, gets through okay. The sound check seemed to be all right. Um... Right, I'm going to see now, if, if you can hear me, can you type yes in the chat box, please? If you can hear me. 
so that I know if the sound is working okay. Oh, hi, Diane Nielsen. Thanks ever so much. I'm glad you can hear me. That's wonderful. Um, where are you watching in from today? Oh, drat. Why has that happened? Why did that happen now? Damn. Right. Ah. I think I'm going to have to restart the stream now because um, I pressed record button and the machine didn't like that. So I'm going to end the stream because I'm still a little bit early anyway. Oh, no, we're back. We're okay. Right. I see. Okay. So we're back on. We're back on. Okay. Also from Virginia. Well, hello from Virginia. I guess it's early in the morning over there, Diane. And are you a beginner watercolourist or have you got a little bit of experience under your belt, I wonder? Just to say, Diane, we're about 10 minutes early. This live stream is due to start at 3 o'clock, so I'm just on here checking all the technical stuff is OK before I get going. All right. OK. I'll just put another little message on the thing so that people know I'm starting at three o'clock. And then they will. Let me get my that. And let's have another little card for the time. Okay, so I'm gonna put uh Okay, I will start at 3 p.m. Okay, there we go. Right, so I've got a few messages there for people who might be tuning in now. So actually here in Wales, where I'm just about to do this cloud live stream, I'm looking out of my attic window and the clouds in the sky are honestly just exactly uh, the same as the clouds that I'm about to paint in the live stream. So that bodes really well, doesn't it? And uh, if my camera was a bit more flexible, I could point it out of the window and show you. But I've taken ages to get this um, camera position ready so I don't really want to move it now because it's in the perfect position for me to do the live stream so you'll just have to take my word for it that it's a nice bright uh, blousy blustery type of day right now outside the window and um, I'm looking at the shadows inside the clouds you know which I'm going to be painting now in watercolour and it's, it's good to have them right in front of my eyes as well as in photographic form, uh, which I've also got. If I just get the uh, pack so that I can show you um, what the pack looks like. Bear with me a second. Let's see here. Okay, so some of you might be tuning in now and you might have bought the pack for this uh, live stream watercolor it's eight pages and what I've done is I've created um, you know the materials list then I've done photographic step by step with instructions on painting below each image so that you can have this as a good educational resource you know for, for uh, how long you want to keep it and uh, there are the grayscale <coughs> images of the clouds and a posterized image of the clouds so you can actually see you know the lights the mid-tones and the darks which is what we'll be looking at in a moment then a big picture of the clouds and the outline 
plus on the back there's lots of extra useful um, educational watercolour tips on how to stretch paper, how to make your own piece of trace down. There's also a link to my, uh, my independent magazine that I produce, which is written by an artist for artists. There's a free course there that you can apply for on my academy. You can join my academy today and it's just an hours long um, mini course on how to paint spheres. And there's also other information about me and for useful for you. Okay, so that pack, it comes in at around £4 and it's the link to buy it is in the description of this video and it's from my Etsy shop so you can buy that now or afterwards because uh, even though we're doing a live stream now uh, I've already filmed the cloud tutorial yesterday and whether I upload the... I might up upload both actually, I might uh, upload the live stream when it's finished and I'll upload the tutorial that I did yesterday so you've got the two to look at. Um, I'm Alison Fennell the Pottery and Artist and I do mostly free videos on my YouTube channel but now I'm actually starting to charge a very small fee for these paint along packs like this that I produce because they're an additional thing and they take a bit of work and just to sort of supplement my freelance artistic income. So uh, I hope you've already subscribed to my YouTube channel and uh, if you do want to get alerts when I do these live streams or when I put a new video on which is going to be a lot more frequent as of today you need to subscribe by clicking the red button and then you also need to click the grey bell uh, which will allow you to receive alerts. If you don't click click the grey bell you won't automatically get alerts okay so it's a two-step process all right um, I'm Alison Fennell I'm based in Wales um, I'm a professional artist I've been painting professionally for the last 10 years and I've been teaching profession uh, teaching adults for the last five years as well and um, I have been teaching in person uh, workshops but of course that's all changed now with this COVID-19 so I'm very lucky in that I can do either these live streams or I can upload videos uh, pre-recorded videos which will help you learn watercolour. While we're waiting for the next four minutes before I start the live stream at three o'clock just to say that in the text under the the video description there are all sorts of links that are, might be useful to you. There's a free micro course you can have. There's a link to my website, which has got uh, links to paying courses, which are between eight and 10 modules long. And they've got all, um, basically they're geared for beginner watercolor artists. Okay, because I think having the fundamentals really clearly and slowly explained to you is the most beneficial thing of all because watercolour is quite a demanding medium and it's not as simple as it looks is it if you if you have dabbled already or if you are intermediate you'll know it's quite a demanding uh, medium so I've got those modular courses which are there and they are lifetime access and I support you with one-to-one -one, um, handwritten critiques and I'm an email away if you've got any questions and I respond within the day or as soon as I see the email. So I give a lot of um, personal um, input and motivation to my students. So um, that's one of the sort of benefits of taking one of my online courses through my academy. My academy is called the Pottery and Artist Academy and it's on teachable.com the link to that and all the other bits and bobs is in the description below the video okay so you can either join me on youtube here to help with your watercolor or you can join me as a sort of uh, a student working from your own home in, in conjunction with me via one, one of my modular courses okay so again just to say that i've got um in the description a free course that you can actually join in to get today with on my academy it's called paint shiny spheres in watercolor and basically i show you how to pick to do one one technique and it's just to get a shine you know and darkness on a ball to make it look 3d and i think if you can sort of get a handle on that 
Hiya, Jim. Nice to see you. I think so far everything is working okay. And uh, fingers crossed that it's going to carry on working while I do this cloud tutorial. Thanks for joining us, Jim. Um, this shiny sphere course is a lovely way to dip your toe in. In fact, I think, Jim, you've already joined in with it, haven't you? You you, you joined on the Academy last week with this. So um, it's, a ha it's a half an hour to an hour's course. You can try out with very basic materials, a small kit of watercolour. You don't need a lot. And I show you in real time, in very small steps, how to get um, a 3D effect using watercolour by putting on some colour, then lifting a highlight and then putting in a shade. And with watercolour, it's all about timing. And I show you the timing, when to do it. And it's all about the type of mixture. And I also show you the type of mixture you need to have made. And finally, it's about how wet your paper is, isn't it? And again, you'll see just how wet my paper is before I drop any colour in. So you get to see the whole caboodle and we're just focusing on painting shiny spheres. It's very simple. But at the end of it, you'll get a feel of the mind of watercolour and what you need to be caring about if you want to get good at watercolour. OK, well, it's three o'clock, everybody, and I'm going to start promptly because there's nothing worse than hanging about. Is there when you're on time for something and then the tutor says, oh, let's wait for the stragglers. Well, three o'clock is the time. So I'm going to start with the tutorial. OK. Right, today's tutorial is going to paint. We're going to paint this beautiful, blustery cloudy sky and I think most people you know feel that watercolour lends itself really well to skies and it does because it gives us beautiful soft edges and uh, it, it, watercolour evokes that softness that you that you feel in a sky but the trick is with painting clouds is to also have a few hard edges in there and that's what I'll be showing you today is how to achieve some hard edges and some soft edges within the cloud mass itself. All right, so I'll be showing you techniques on how to do that. Let me just zoom in here. For example, that's quite a crisp edge, whereas within the cloud itself, I've got some softer edges. You see this blue goes softly into pale, almost white. So that's a soft edged transition. OK, so handling edges in watercolour is one of the trickiest things to do. It's harder than oils, harder than pastel, harder than acrylic, because blending in watercolour means that you've got to be careful of how much water you've got on your brush and in the paper. And we're going to look at that today. So before I get going with the actual painting, this is the watercolour pack, uh, the paint along pack that you can choose to buy if you wish. The link to it is the first link in the description of the video below. It's an eight page uh, document that I've created with step by step photographs and written instructions on how to do this demonstration that I'm going to do as well. Plus you've got the posterized and the grayscale image of the clouds which will help us see more easily the darkest areas of the clouds going into the lightest areas which we really need to know. We need to be confident you know Where's the darkest part of the cloud? Where where can I get away with leaving it really almost as the white of the paper? And these are things that we will be looking at before we get going with our colour um, rendition. And then you've got a beautiful image of the, the cloud there. Then I've done a very simplified uh, outline which will help you to get going with this. Again, because we're learning here, you know, on my board that I prepared earlier, I've got the outline down in pencil and OK, some of the pencil lines might end up showing through the final painting, but I, I don't really care about that so much. I just want to be able to show you how I build the clouds so that with some practice, then you can go sort of more freehand and, and put less pencil lines in eventually. And then the last page of the pack is an information sheet, including that free course I mentioned to you. Then there are more things like how to make trace down how to stretch paper, and then there's my magazine, which is a lovely arty read, etc, etc. So all of that 
is about four pounds and it's a, a downloadable pdf or a word document you can choose whichever way you want to get it from the link in my in the description below this video and it's from my etsy shop also in the link is my email it's the pottering artist at hotmail.com and i am here to help you on your watercolor journey whichever the, you know however far along it you may be or not i'm a teacher at heart and your success is what i'm interested in okay so let me move these papers out of the way and we're going to get going this is the one i prepared earlier i feel a bit like blue peter here uh, I think it's always good to sort of prepare, right? I did I did this big practice piece yesterday. You know, you, I could have painted it half the size. I think with watercolour, if you're new to something, maybe paint it at a slightly smaller scale. So the outline that's in the pack, you could choose to shrink it down if you've got that ability and just do a smaller outline, etc. So let's pop that out of the way now. <clears throat> Right, this is the paper I'm going to use today. It's Fabriano Artistico and it's 100% cotton rag. 100% cotton or cotton rag, it's the same thing. Basically, I use 100% cotton because it's 15 times tougher than wood pulp. So papers like Bockingford or any paper that doesn't say it's 100% cotton rag is probably made from wood pulp or alpha cellulose and it's not as tough. And you'll notice that when you sort of paint and paint and paint, it starts to bobble and disintegrate a little bit. And that's usually proof that you're not using cotton paper. Also, cotton paper is a lot more expensive than wood paper. OK, but for this type of demo for the cloud, I'm going to be doing a lot of rubbing out with my brush and with an eraser. I'm going to be applying two lots of washes. And so I need this paper to hold it together. And this paper is as tough as old boots. OK, so it's um, 90 pounds in weight. That's 200 GSM equivalent. And it's the cold press surface. So that's also known as not N-O-T. Cold press and not are the same thing. And so I've got my cloud shapes there. All right. So what I want to get in front of me now are my images to help me. And what I always keep to hand are, as you'll find in the pack, I keep my grey scales. I've given you two, as I say, the grey scale of the picture as it was, plus this posterized one, which has got these strange sort of like, almost like contour uh, groupings of tones. And those are really good as a roadmap to help me know how dark and how light to go. So I keep that handy. So I've got that at hand. And then obviously my, my actual photograph. So I can put the other things out of the way now. All right. So I've stretched the paper overnight, which means I've soaked it in a tub of cold water for about three to five minutes. And then I've stuck it down on this board, which is nine millimeter plywood. It's not hardboard. OK, plywood is what you want. And um, then I, I lay it flat wipe it round the edges with a, a cloth and then I stick this gummed brown tape around it while it's flat. Half on the paper, half off the paper. Then I leave it dry overnight and in the morning it's as tight as a drum and when I start painting now it shouldn't do this buckling and barely in that you sometimes get with watercolour paper. Right, so the colours um, that we're going to use for this are going to be Indan Throne Blue, which is a, a gorgeous blue, quite a classy looking blue. Then I'm going to use a little bit, we'll be using a little bit of Windsor Violet, which is a very elegant violet, just to give my uh, sky a little bit of interest instead of using the typical French ultramarine blue or cobalt blue. Then we'll be adding a little bit of burnt umber which again will knock the Indian Throne blue back a bit and give it a bit more realism. And then a little bit of permanent sap green we'll be using for this, that sort of tree line, um, that tiny bit of land mass that's in the foreground. If I can just show you here. 
You see we've got some dark trees and some grass. Well, I'm going to, they'll be painted in in quite a, a suggested way, very little detail, detail because the painting's not about those little trees and stuff. It's about this big, blustery cloud mass, which we want to try and evoke in watercolour. All right. So those are all the colours I'm going to use. I use Windsor & Newton Professional Quality Artist Tube Paint and I put them in a palette like this, which is a large Frank Webb palette. Um, if you want the link to buy this, it's from Cheap Joe's in America. Um, uh, Cheap Joe's down in North Carolina Boone. They don't sell them in the UK, but they sell something similar, which is a John Pike palette. So again, if you want to email me, email's in the description, I'll send you links to these palettes. That comes with a lid, so it keeps the paints nice and moist for days and days and weeks. And then I spray it through the week with um, a spray bottle to keep all the paints moist. I spray them about three times a week. And that keeps it all beautiful and moist. And believe it or not, I've had this palette about 25 years, which is amazing, isn't it, really? So it's been my friend all that time. OK, so first of all, we're going to wet the whole sheet. One thing to say, I've got plenty of jugs of water on hand so that my water stays absolutely beautiful and clean the whole way uh, through. So the first brush I'm going to use is a, it's a one inch brush, uh, one and a half is fine as well. I'm going to wet the whole area. Hello to everybody, uh, hello to you if you've just joined. I did start at three o'clock prompt, okay, but you will have a chance to rewind this. Plus, I'm going to be uploading my practice sky that I filmed yesterday. So you'll probably have two videos on the sky to watch before the end of today. Or at least tomorrow at the very latest. OK. So I'm just going to zoom in a tiny bit more and get a bit of a closer look there. How's that? A bit better. Right, so I'm soaking the paper because this is cotton paper and it absorbs an awful lot of water and because it does that it means I've got more painting time. I haven't got to rush to put my colours on because if your, if your paper dries out very quickly you might end up with a lot of hard edges where you don't really want them just at that moment. So in the beginning with this watercolour sky, I want everything to stay as moist as it can so that when I put my blues on in a second, they will bleed slightly and they will all end up with soft edges. Now a lot of you at this point might be saying, well, how wet do you, does this have to be? And the answer is you put on enough water so that when it sinks in after about a minute, it's still got a faint shine on the paper. You don't want it to sink in and then the paper to uh, be, be dull. Because if it's dull, it's just damp. And damp is not wet enough. You need it to be moist. And the only way you know you've got moist paper is if you've got that shine, isn't it? OK, so you need to take your time to wet it so that it can sink in a little bit and, and it sort of becomes a little reservoir within the paper so the paper is good and soaked but it isn't sloshing around on the surface we don't want sloshing around surface water that's what you don't want and the way to tell if you've got sloshing around surface water is to tip your board and see at, right at the diagonal point there if that starts beading and you get a lot of water a lot of water there then you know you've got to tip it back and let it soak in for a little half a minute longer perhaps because you've got too much surface water which will result in incontrollable soupy paint going everywhere when you start to, to lay your colours on. So I'm waiting now, this is a waiting game and the way I tell if, if my shine is right is I hold it to the window. Can you just see that shine there? See that shine? 
hold it to a light source, either the window or, or a bulb or whatever as you're painting. And just keep an eye on it. It needs to soak in a little tiny bit more until you can start seeing the dimpling texture of the paper maybe showing through a bit. Okay, so that's looking almost ready. So while that's just getting um, a bit more nearer to the moist state, I'm going to use a slightly smaller brush. Actually, I'm going to use um, this one. This is about a three-quarter three quarter brush, three quarter inch flat brush. Right now this is this is key now. So I've I've moistened that brush and I've flicked it really hard. I'm gonna pick up some Indian thrown blue. Pick up maybe a droplet of water that's on the palette. I don't want this very very runny. Then I'm gonna pick up some burnt umber. Again, this is like a bit of a tennis match, going back and forth, getting the sort of darkish blue that I want. Now I'm going to pick up a bit of um, Windsor Violet. Again, I'm picking up a little droplet of water there. Just really fine-tuning this mixture, because this is where people go wrong. They, they mix up a big soupy wash of blue, and then it just bleeds really too, too uh, wildly. This is what I call a pigmented mix, okay? It's not dripping off my brush, is it? Right? It's a pigmented mix. It's not very um, gooey, but it's not too runny either. Because I'm going to be applying this to paper, which, uh, as I've just explained to you, is moist. Now, this is perfect. Can you see that sheen? This is the optimum um, condition of the paper that you've got to get. Okay, it's moist, but actually down in this corner, it's gone a bit damp and there's no shine on it. So I can quickly remedy that by getting some water on a brush and just soaking those corners once more. It's better to have a little bit more. So again, I'm going to add a bit more water to the corners where it dries out more quickly rather than uh, risk that be too dry. constantly be in water aware this is your job as a watercolorist all right you can't get away with not caring about water so let's get the color on now so i'm painting this on and as you can see it's um not bleeding too wildly why well because my paper is moist it isn't a wash with water you know there's a difference a very fine difference between being awash with water and being moist. And these are things you need to uh, care about in watercolour, all right? And, and, and again, being aware of what you need to know helps. This is why I'm doing this <coughs> tutorial. There's a little gap in between there. And so as I'm putting this paper on, it is soft. You know, the, the marks I'm making have got a soft edge because there's moisture in the paper. So it's it's um, controlled wet into wet. I'm painting with uh, wet pigmented uh, mix onto wet paper. I'm just going to kill the white at the bottom of the uh, page there as well. Drop a bit more in there. Right. So now I'm going to let this all run. I'm tipping my board. So I want gravity now to help this travel up and down. So it's going to be a strange view for you for a while. Okay. And you've got to leave it, you've got to give it quite a while for the paint to gain momentum. So I'm holding it at this uh, ver practically vertical, in you know, 90 uh, degrees to the paper, to the table, so that this colour will run. But really, it's not running; it's creeping, isn't it? It's creeping rather than running. Let's tip it up the other way now. I see that's a bit of a hard edge there. So I'm going to come in with a 
that brush that I flicked, <coughs> add some more um, of that little bit more moisture to it and bring it down a bit more, okay? That's nice there, but this is a bit hard. So if you get that and it looks a bit too hard, just bring your spray and I'm going to give it one or two judicious squirts. And give time in between each squirt. And there. Um, and that should soften that hardness that I'd made there. Right, that's going to come down a little bit softly. And hold it at this slight angle. And then tilt it back and forth. And then you will see that it's gently... Gently mingling a little bit more, looks a little less hard. Tilt it, you know, um, north, south, east, west, tilt it every which way. Let this run. Let it run back and forth. And I think what I'll do as well is give this a little bit of a spray here. And again, give it a few seconds for it to start dissolving the paint before you squirt again, because otherwise it can get a little bit too dodgy. Okay, we just want a soft, we want the softness and the control so in between squirting give it give it time for the squirts to dissolve that paint a tad and then squirt on again and then you'll get a soft soft creep see the soft creep here that's nice see that that's lovely isn't it that soft creep there and then let's just tip it this way now so we're getting this hazy, lazy, hazy day sort of feel like um, a halo behind the clouds, you know. So now I'm tipping it this way. So the paint is having a good old mingle. See, look, this is streaking off now over to there, right? So it, all it gives me is a nice soft um, edge to this initial cloud massing all right yeah that's softened a bit better now because that was a bit hard there wasn't it okay and i think i think i'm gonna lay it flat now right so that's how it's looking at the moment let me zoom in to show you so you've got this sort of blurry hazy cloudscape now the magic bits now that we can do are to just tidy up the edges <coughs> so that we can see what we've got. And I like to just get a slightly a, a dried tissue, and I'm going to press. I'm going to press in some hard edges here. See that hard edges on the. Uh, the left hand side on the left hand side I'm gonna I'm gonna leave the right hand side be darker and have the have the right sorry leave the right hand side be dark and have the right hand side have the hardest edges so that we'll have that as a contrast. So now I'm starting to use it, and each time, twist your tissue and start with a fresh piece of tissue. And press in then to get these harder edges.
Let's have maybe some breakaway, some little breakaway ones that are sort of drifting off, you know, sort of from behind the clouds. Okay, cutting in there. You'll find that the paint will creep back in. Watercolour keeps on working and moving while you are working with it. It's a live thing. It's not like, you know, oils or pastel where when you put a mark down, it stays there. Watercolour doesn't do that. So you've got to constantly, it's like stemming the tide. You've got to constantly be aware that what mark you preserved might suddenly disappear when the watercolour will creep back in. Just when you think you've got a nice shape, it'll all rush back in again. So I'm having to redo some of those. <clears throat> At the moment, all I'm caring about is my outlines because I'm not going to do anything to the inside clouds at this stage. The inside clouds work is going to happen in the next stage, which you'll see in a little minute. So let's uh, see. I love that blur there. Now that that is what I want. That blur away, sort of, right? And then it's a hard against the blur. So we got a lot of texture and light coming behind the cloud. You know, like a light. Um, burst you know light burst behind this cloud bank and don't worry that it looks a bit ugly duckling at this stage because that's what i get a lot with students on my courses they are a bit anxious because things are not looking pretty straight away you know they they want to be painting a pretty painting and if it's not looking pretty at each stage they get a bit anxious and i totally understand that because i used to be the same but you, you'll go through phases where you think well that doesn't look anything but believe me when you come to do then the next stage you'll you'll see how it all fits in to place so just allow yourself to deal with this one phase of the painting which is painting this blue sky background the general cloud mass and we'll worry about all the other bits in the next section because we'll, this is going to be a two-part sky. Notice I'm not doing any pressing out at the base here because as I'm looking at my um, my posterized thing, my posterized image, I can, I'm not going to do these little white ones. I'm just going to keep it simple today. The base of the cloud is very dark, going into mid-tone and then paler and paler. So the dark, uh, the dark area down there, I'm not going to be pressing any highlights out of that right I'm just gonna ask Jim if he's still there how was the sound Jim is the sound still okay and Diane if you're still there is the sound still okay and whoever else is there can you tell me whether the sound is good for you because that would be useful right so at this stage now I'm not going to do a lot more I've pressed out some highlights and we're going to let this dry now and I can just show you the state of the paper now it's hardly got any shine on it at all now apart from maybe down the bottom there a bit of shine there but the rest of it now is, is practically dry okay so oh, thank you Jim you're a real star that's great now, before I start hair drying this paint, and I'm just a, want to tidy up a little bit, and I've now got a tiny piece of slightly damp uh, tissue paper, and I just like to rub away as close as I dare to all those really strong blue marks on the masking tape, which is sort of irritating my eye as I as I judge and assess my painting. So I like to just have a little tidy up at each stage. Just be very careful you don't press a, a, um, a blob of water to seep out onto that because it'll cause a back run on your painting, okay? So I'll just done a little tidy up now. And I'm going to be getting the hairdryer on this. And then we'll be going in to paint the insides of the clouds. See, that's much better now, isn't it, without all those strong raggedy blues on there. So again, I'm just going to clean up the edge a little bit. So 
so that I can better assess how things are looking. Right, got a little speck there. Let's get that off. Right. Okay, so it's time for the hair dryer now. So I'm going to gently dry this. Ideally, uh, if I wasn't doing a live stream, I would be going off for a cup of tea now and letting this dry naturally. But because we're on the live stream, I'm going to have to do it right now. So I'm going it on a, a gentle heat and I'm going to hold it quite far away. dry in a watercolour a lot of people in my classes will give it a dry like that and then they'll they'll think they've dried the watercolour but in fact they haven't and the way of testing is if you use this soft part of your thumb and press it on the paper if it feels at all cool which this does that means there's tons of water still in there in the, in the fibres of the watercolour paper so on no account would I want to now be re-wetting this paper in that state because it's now damp which is the worst state of all um, I need to make sure it's bone dry so I'm going to keep on drying Generally, I don't like using a hairdryer on watercolour because I tend to feel that it dulls the brilliance of the pigments <coughs> and it, it, it also dries the paints too quickly as well. So it, it affects the gum arabic that the, the pigments are bound with in the actual tubes, you know. So it's not a good thing to do, really. So try and avoid, and avoid doing it. I can see now already that there's sort of scorchy... Not that this has been a hot hair dryer by any means, but there's sort of like scorchy marks on that, which really annoys me. But as I say, for a live stream, I need to be able to progress the painting. And so I'm doing that. Now, it's still, it's still damp. It's still cool. So bear with me because I don't want to blow this and be painting on paper that's not bone dry. What we're going to do in this next stage then is to re-wet the entire painting with clear water with this big brush so that I can get the, um, the layers of water on very quickly and gently and lightly so that there's the least possible disturbance to the wash underneath, the paint underneath. It shouldn't loosen much. It, it'll loosen a tiny bit but it won't loosen terribly. And then in that sort of re-moistened state, then we're going to be dropping in the shades at the bottom of the cloud and some of the sort of shadows within the cloud body itself, <clears throat> as I've done here. 
you, you can't achieve all of this in one go. Uh, it needs to be done in two stages, and that's why this first sort of ugly duckling stage is just the precursor to getting this extra work then on the actual inside of the cloud form, making it look 3D by having a much lighter side uh, area and then a sort of darker areas so that we and, and then they need to transition softly hiya jenny it's lovely to see you don't worry about being late because there's um going to be a full version of this so you'll see it all in its entirety later on today or early tomorrow morning okay probably today lovely to see you um and we need the transition to go softly from the light to the dark in places and then we can have some hard edges as well for contrast okay so this is why i'm doing this as a two-part sky <coughs> right again i am purpose purposely delaying yeah see it's still still a little bit damp now this is where you know you know you can go wrong in watercolor because you'll want to hurry on now water demands that you wait for her to dry properly so i'm going to dry it again As per this printable tutorial, if you want to buy it, it's the first link in the description of this video. You'll see um, that's the first stage, which we're just we're just completing now. Okay, where we've just got the blue sky and then the white cloud mass with no detail in the cloud mass. And then what we're going to do is step two, which is where we start to add the cloud mass. And one thing to know, we'll go straight from step two on to step three without drying in between all right so that's that's something to sort of bear in mind sometimes you've got to wait for watercolor to dry and then sometimes you've got to get a wiggle on and paint while things are still wet and these are the crucial timing uh expertise timing expertise that you need to develop with watercolor right now i'm ready so before I start wetting this, let's get the puddles of colour mixed up because we need to have the shadow colours ready, you know, to put in the clouds so we don't have to faff about mixing cloud colour, uh, cloud shadow colours while the paper's wet and then drying. We want to have it all ready. So <clears throat> I'm going to pick up some of that original colour and to, to make it paler, you need to add more water. But then, of course, when you add more water, you make it more runny. So you might ask, well, how am I going to control all of that? Well, what you do is you can switch to a smaller brush and a round brush and you would pick up less paint. OK, the only way to lighten the colour in watercolour, if you're using pure transparent watercolour, is to add water. We never add tube paint. Uh, we never add tube white. Well, supposedly, if you're, if you're a purist, you don't add tube white, OK? Because what, what tube white is, is opaque. And then that opaque white will just dull your watercolour. It won't be a watercolour anymore. It will be rather a gouache, OK? So gouache is opaque watercolour, basically. So I'm going to add just a tiny bit more burnt umber. I'm aiming for a nice shadow colour now, OK? So and uh, maybe a tiny little speck of Windsor Violet. And I'm going to mi mix it all through this puddle so that it's a uniform puddle. Maybe a bit more brown again. Tiny, tiny amounts, in tiny increments, you know, forensic amounts you need. And then to, to test this colour, let's get a bit of scrap paper and just test that now. Right, that's not bad. Uh, 
as a shadow colour goes. Uh, I think it could have a little bit more um, brown in it, actually. Let's get this back up here so I can see the colour it was. Right. <clears throat> yes, not, not bad. A little bit more, a little bit more burnt umber in that. Okay, so a tiny bit, and I, again, I'm using the t the corner of my brush. I'm not sticking in that big blob of brown with watercolour. You need to work in fine increments usually, because watercolour is about you know veils of colour and fine dilutions of colour. Okay, so I'll try that. Right, so I've got. A, I'm going to go for. Um, this will be my smaller brush. I'm going to use a, a a half inch flat to do this addition this additional work. So again, preparing the brush to, to use. What you don't want to do is dip it in right to the pot and it have it like you know splooshy and full of water. That's far too wet because if I go to apply that on my moistened paper in a minute, there'll be no control. So what I do is I flick it. Just, um, I'm going to flick it off camera really hard you know flick it as hard as your arm can go and now it's a much different brush this is key this brush is perfect now for putting in that uh, shadow color in a moment and it won't be so runny it won't be so out of control so I'm going to keep that at the ready for adding my shadow color right the wetting of the paper <clears throat> now I don't want to use this water because can you see it's just got a slight hint of blue very slightly blue. I don't want that because I've got white paper. So I want my new pot of, of water, which is pure, clean water. Do not wet your sky with um, dirty water. It must be fresh, clean water. Right, so I'm going to now wet the whole caboose. And this is how I wet it. Lay it on generously and slowly see like that get that in there load up my brush each time back and forth so that each stroke overlaps with the other load up my brush each time drag it across drag it across because we want these clouds inside to be lovely and wet so that when we do the work on them they will take a soft they will uh, take a soft appearance back and forth slowly back why oh, didn't reload my brush well it doesn't matter too much when we get down to the uh, the ground it doesn't matter too much now you can see See that shine on the paper? Okay, you might have a little bit of puddling in places, so just, I'm tipping my board, just let those run, because you might get some nice uh, interesting effects. But we want to make sure that overall the, the white area of the cloud is moist. Okay, so that's, can you see, it's moist all over again but as I did say the cloud shape has more or less stayed doesn't it we haven't lost everything so now <clears throat> I've got my smaller brush here ready to put some shadows in these clouds and this is where I want to pick up this this now is going to be my very useful road map and this is in the pack if you want to buy it the road map of where I'm going to put my uh, my lightest shadows, my getting darker, getting darker, getting darker, to my darkest shadows within the cloud mass, which will start to make it look 3D. Okay. But before I start applying that, I just want to double check my the state of my paper. See that now? That's what we want. It's got that moisture all along. Okay. Oh, but I've got a bit of um, a bit of a pedal forming in the top corner, so I'm going to pick that up so that it doesn't run back and cause a a back run. 
So this is perfect uh, condition now. So I'm going to pick up some of this palest grey now. And I'm looking at this to help me. So I'm going to start placing it. Roughly following this outline here, you see. So this is slightly moist. And because we're working flat, you know, I, I never work with my board tilted. Because we're working flat, the paint sort of just sits where you've put it. So this is mostly cloudy, there's a little bit of dark up there, a little bit of dark up there. Adding this darker tone all in. There's some in there. And you need to work quickly because the, we, we want to be doing this into this moist paper. So I'm vaguely, vaguely following this, okay? This roadmap that I call it. Some darker blues in there. So I'm picking up, I'm still using the same The colour there. Now at this point I want to tip that and let it all run just let it run up into the the white of the cloud and I need to leave this have quite a bit of time so you mustn't mustn't rush it we want to soften all this grey up into the white of the cloud. Let's tip it back this way. Okay, this is where it's going to start mingling up and down now and give us the soft fusion that we're after. Again, it's going to be hard for you to see because I've got it at this angle, but it needs to run softly up into the apex of the cloud and I want it to have time to do that again there's a big temptation to sort of rush and not give uh, the medium its time to move about I think that's not bad now okay so can you see now if we'll just tip in doing that sort of tip in action we've achieved that sort of feel. Now I want to go straight back in for some darker Indian Throne, uh, uh, some more Indian Throne blue and a little bit more burnt umber. A bit more blue again. This is going to be a darker shadow now to sort of build on what we've got going at the moment. Tiny bit more not such runny um, paint. I'm sort of picking up little blobs of paint off the the blob rather than the sort of liquid paint in the well. So I want to put this now, this darker uh, grey there. And take it across the base of the clouds over here as well. So a little dark bit there, maybe some dark there. Okay. 
okay now again this looks quite bitty but don't worry because we're going to soften them so tip it now and then with a round a moist brush that's a round tip I've moistened it I flicked it and then I'm going to touch in and encourage that to sort of bleed up rinse my brush again touch in and encourage them to bleed up like that and these maybe bleed up a bit more so we've got a darker part of the shadow and then bleeding away like that with this moist brush okay now with the with the tissue now we're going to go back hiya susan lovely to see you thanks for joining us lovely to see you susan yes watch it now so and then you can paint it later okay now i'm going to take out some nice highlights now uh just around that hardish area that i had lifted out And again, within this, looking at my road map here, I need to cut in to take advantage of the dark areas. Because what we're doing is playing light against dark, okay? And it's softening there so we've got a mixture of soft edges and hard edges it's much lighter in there and then there's a bit of highlight there okay so what i'm going to do now i've got a slightly moist brush now this is a smaller one and I'm going to just very quickly blend in this darker part of the cloud and maybe take it up there just to sort of form that right hand edge a little bit more depth in a defined way and maybe have some little breakaway uh, edges to it so it's not so solid so so two thirds of the cloud really is d uh, light and then we've got about a third of it which is a bit darker okay and then i've got a little area here which i'd like to lift out and it's gone a bit too dry so what i've got to do is get a good scrubby brush now this is like an acrylic brush it's a bit firmer so i'm going to moisten it really well and then i'm going to hope it'll um let me wipe in wipe in and start to sort of scrub out yeah it's coming off scrub out a little dip in this gray uh, part of the cloud see this is what i'm talking about you won't be able to do this if you're using wood pulp like barking foot paper it'll probably start to complain and break and disintegrate with you so i'm really working away at that shape with some clear water so that i can change that gray dip that i had i didn't like the shape of it very much okay so with this uh, acrylic brush it's got a lot more guts to it than a than a watercolor and if i get my tissue again i can press in now and wipe out a bit more of a yeah a bit of a whiter area there let's also press in to that part of the grey for a bit of contrast okay so that's how it's looking at the moment right while we are um what i want to do now is is scrub away at some other areas to make them softer as well so i'm going to go in here Again, this is down to your personal judgment. Now, as you look and squint at your clouds, 
If you feel there are any areas that are too hard on the eye or are too uh, dark, you can go in with this scrubby brush and just start dislodging it and then press in with a tissue to get more of a fluff, a fluff feeling going on, okay? I don't like that grey there at all, okay? So I'm just going to just get rid of that. So a lot more water, so there's quite a bit of fluid going on there to dissolve that grey blue and its counterpart there. Don't want that. See, this is what you can do. This is the fine tuning you can do when you've got your basic greys, lights in your painting. You can then fine tune to your taste. And don't be afraid of, you know, showing it who's boss, okay? Because it's taking quite a hold there. So I've got a lot of water on the surface and I'm scrubbing it back and forth. But that's a bit better and what I'll do is I'll disguise that by placing a little crevice in there as well. So let's have a look at the rest of my edges. Now what I'm liking about the clouds so far is this sort of wispy area at the top. And um, what I'd like to do now is sort of just work away. If I zoom in a bit, see so you can get this sort of heavenly Lovely heavenly look about this now, right? We got a mixture of whoosh, like it's a wisp. There's barely any distinction between the cloud and the sky. Now we've got a completely lost edges. So, you know, lost and found edges are good in a painting because it gives you, your viewer some interest. You know, you, you don't spell everything out too plainly for them. And having lost and found edges is really hard to do in watercolor. So I've got this scrubby, slightly damp brush and I'm just going to work away at these really ragged um, white edge and again not having a very wet brush this is this is barely damp this brush is key because if I had any more moisture it would start to cause a back run within the blue of the sky wouldn't it I think we're, we're all quite um, aware of <coughs> the problems of back runs so Again, I'd like a little bit more fluff and softness here. So I'm, I'm straddling the crisp edge of the cloud and that pale blue background of the sky. I'm straddling that area, just scrubbing it back and forth, back and forth, left, right, left, right, up, down, up, down. And then coming in with a clean piece of tissue, pressing that in and getting a lovely soft effect. That's a little bit too dark isn't it so let's work over that back and forth back and forth left to right left to right see how you can just diminish and with a slightly more moisture just diminish that that's a bit that's a bit nicer isn't it it was a bit like a bruise it was a bit too bruised right let's zoom out let's see how the whole thing's looking right what else is looking a bit too hard Hello BAE, thanks for all the thumbs up and everything, that's very kind of you. Yes, so you, you've done that, haven't you, with a wet, with um, a brush, just to scrub things out. Right, now what else? Now, as I squint at this, things that are jumping out at my eye that I don't really like is the this dark shadow. It's gone a bit towards the green, to be honest, right? It's, it's not looking as a nice shadow colour as I'd have hoped. Okay, so what we can do with that is, again, with this scrubby brush, we can get in there, paint into it, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. We can loosen it off a lot. You need a lot of water. And then you can press it all away with a, a terry toweling cloth. Okay, so you can diminish the colour of that. 
a little bit because this is a bit hard. I'd like to now go back in with a little bit of um, the shadow colour, which was so the bluey, the blue, which was in the unthrown blue and a tiny bit of burnt timber. I'm going to put in some shapes within the cloud now like this. So let me zoom in on that. So that's a hard, crisp white edge there. And behind it, I've put that soft grey blue. And now I'm teasing it out to create a sort of dent, a crevice in the middle of this big cloud. So that's how I'm doing that. This is the same. So I painted, uh, uh, um, this is on dry paper. I painted some of this shadow blue and I'm making it sort of follow an imaginary crisp white part of the cloud and then I'm dragging it away to nothing. Rinse your brush. Uh, I've rinsed my brush and I've flicked it. Now I'm going to wet this part of the cloud and wipe that even further away. Now I'm going to go back in and drop in, see, a stronger shadow in that crevice again. Rinse my brush, flick my brush, coax it out a bit further. And then maybe soften that one because it looks a little bit too contrived. So then we hopefully got this fluffy bank which is in front of this one here a little bit okay uh yeah so sorry about the color of this right hand side it sort of went to green a little bit i think i accidentally had a tiny bit of sap green on the palette and i think it got in there okay so what i'm gonna do now is start with my um i'm gonna hair dry everything uh, i'm gonna hair dry everything now and then i'm gonna do some rubbing out around the uh, softer parts of the sky so plug your ears everybody because this is a bit a bit noisy of water hmm right so with them um, in the description of what I suggest you needed we need one of these uh, soft plastic erasers a white one preferably and then I'm going to start very gently rubbing away again and as you can see it's taken away a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of a blur of the blue sky. And you can see it's doing it because that's my clean rubber. Okay, and then if I start rubbing now, say here, my rubber was clean, wasn't it? But now I'm rubbing here on that sort of in between the blue and the white. And you can see that is taking up some colour, isn't it? It's taking out some colour, okay? So let's do it with this um, this white area over here as well. And wh while we're doing this as well, we can rub away any pencil lines that are still in evidence that you don't want. Because I've got quite a few pencil lines here. Now can you see this beautiful, soft, 
effect that I'm getting here is, is really lovely. Okay, so, um, so a bit more of it there. On the left hand side is where we are catching the light, okay? So we'll do most of these highlights, these fluffy highlighted areas on the right hand side. Oh gosh, sorry. On the left hand side is where we're getting the light. I always get my left and right muddled up. So we want to soften it. And again, see how much colour I'm rubbing away, just fractionally. Fractionally rubbing away the colour there, okay? Let's try some more down here. It's up to you where you rub these areas away. Uh, keep squinting and standing back from your painting and seeing where you think the, the actual whiter areas need to be. And again, if you were using wood pulp paper, it would probably be it probably be disintegrating and tearing on you right now. Let's go over this side a bit. See if I can make it a, a bit of a paler area down towards the base of this cloud. So get some nice. I'm I'm stroking up into the sky a bit now, just to really give it that hazy, hazy effect. Okay. Let's see what else we can pull out of it. Uh, this area here it can be paler. Right, so I think what I'm going to do is try and um, correct this colour here a little bit. Bear with me a second. I'm going to see if I can um, add a glaze of blue onto this grey, because I think that's the, that's the thing that's jarring with the painting now, is this, this shadow. So I'll um, get a big brush on clear water and again I'm going to wet the whole area, wet the whole painting one more time because it's bone dry now. And this is how you can do corrections. Okay, when, as long as it's bone dry, you can go back in and wet it thoroughly and carefully. Right now, it will loosen some of the paint. You can see it's starting to run down now. We'll take some of the paint off there. See how moist it is. Right, it's moist all over. And it'll that'll just serve actually to um, it'll serve to fuse all of the washes we've done so far. All right, sort of bed everything in more uh, gently, and it'll give me a chance to scrub out this colour that hasn't turned out very well. So I got my scrubby brush here. I'm going to work away back and forth just scrubbing away at that just to diminish it and it'll diminish it and it'll um, unify it as well because it's a little bit patchy that's what's happened and the base there so I'm just diminishing the effects of that uh, it, it looked like a bruised sort of colour and wherever else I've got a uh, colour that's a bit strong, like see this blue here? This is a bit of a strong patch, isn't it? So I'm going to use the fact that I've moistened the pay, uh, the sheet and just scrub over them and 
By doing that, it'll unify them and make them more consistent and more even. Okay? So don't be afraid to go back in and wet, uh, re-wet a watercolour. You can only do that once the watercolour had dried completely. Okay? So I'm lessening the effect of that grey which didn't turn out too well. <coughs> Still got a few patchy areas there which are just catching my eye, but I don't like them too much. So I'm going to straddle it and diminish them. I'm not going to touch that up there though. I know it's patchy up in the top of the sky, but I quite like that. Um, it, it'll be okay when I put the foreground in now, you'll see. Uh, so let's get my uh, terry cloth now. I'm going to Use this terry cloth to press in to my lovely white fluffy areas. I definitely want to keep those. Okay. And again, clean areas where you've got that lovely white uh, part of the cloud. And then I'm just going to gently pat away all the sort of more offending darker areas that looks a little bit better there now right so to finish off i'm going to hair dry everything and then i'm going to be putting the um putting the foreground landing but not before i'm going to have one final stab at this uh, blue shadow so let's try the blue shadow now <coughs> see I'm just going to use Indian Throne Blue and keep it more towards the blue because I think it had just gone a little bit towards the green there okay so let's pick up some Indian Throne Blue see if I can get back in there and correct that happily with a tiny, tiny speck of burnt umber. So I'm just taking a tiny speck. That looks a bit happier. And a tiny, tiny bit of... <coughs> right, that's better. Yeah, okay, that's the shadow colour. Eh? Yeah, that's that shadow blue. That's that's a happier blue, isn't it? it? That one had gone green, you know. Okay, so I'm getting that shadowy blue in there now. So that's better. Right. Okay, if I show you the sort of condition the paper's in now, it's still slightly moist, okay? So again, I just want to blend in some of these darker blue shadows I've reapplied. So I've got my round size 12 brush. I'm going to moisten it really well, flick it, flick it really hard away from your painting, obviously, and then uh, rotate at the edge and sort of soften them in. Here and there. <clears throat> and I think I'm going to leave my sky alone now. Right, so I'm going to hair dry this lot and it's going to get that, let's get that foreground in and see how we're looking then. So again, bear with me with this uh, noisy old hair dryer.
Vicky. So the foreground is going to be a very simple affair because it's, it's not about that line of trees, is it? It's about the clouds. So the, the foreground, we're going to just use a little bit of uh, burnt timber with sap green and suggest a bank of trees in that area. So to keep things simple, I'm purposely going to pick up uh, like an inch brush so I, so I keep the shapes uh, big and simple. I just clean my palette because it's got a bit uh, there. I need some more mixing space. Uh, always keep your palette, you know, clean enough so you've got space to mix. Even if it means wiping away paint. I know a lot of us have got this thing we don't like to wipe away paint and waste it but sometimes you just have to um thanks sue for that yeah i like to show people how they can correct you know if things just go badly uh and just how far you can push a watercolor because until you try and show it who's boss you're never going to know what you can get away with sometimes we're a bit too dainty and delicate aren't we with our watercolors and we abandon them thinking that we can't manipulate them any further but you can i think the golden rule is if you really feel you've messed up with the painting stop let it dry either let it dry naturally or hair dry it and then re-wet the entire sheet and the reason you re-wet the entire sheet is so that um say you wanted to correct an area here right it would be no good you just wet in this area here because you'll cause back runs everywhere else because of the differential between this wet area and that dry area so the way to avoid it is to re-wet your whole painting and then correct the area that you want okay because then everything is as moist as everything else and so you shouldn't get too much of a calamity Okay, so let's get the foreground in. So I'm going to pick up a bit of permanent sap green. By the way, my permanent sap green has decided to grow a bit of mould. I don't know if you can see that there. So what I do is I go in with a, a cotton wool tip and I just wipe it out. See, it, it, it gets a bit blobby and gloopy. Some pigments grow mould more than others and it just depends where you live in the world and how moist things are, etc. So I just take it out with a cotton wool tip. Right, so I've got my permanent sap green. Uh, and let's pick up a bit of permanent sap green. Some burnt umber. That's a nice sort of dulled. And then maybe a little bit of the indanthrone blue as well. Oh, that's a bit too dark. Right, if it's too dark, I just move over to another part of the painting. Start again. Right, that looks very dark on on, ca on camera, but I'm going to make it a bit paler. So we just got this sort of uh, a very, very, very low skyline, haven't we? Okay. So let's make it... Uh, I don't want it to be perfect line so i'm going to just soften it with a scruffy brush just to soften it up have it slightly different uh height don't want it to be all the same height so paint some trees in it's very very simplistic but they're not meant to have much detail at all You don't want to catch the eye too much with these. That should do it. Now that's a little bit too dark overall, isn't it? So what we do then is we can come along with a little bit of tissue and just wipe out some highlights on this the left hand, uh, the left hand side of these clumps of trees. And then we'll go in with a small brush, maybe a size uh, three brush, and then put some shadows 
on the right hand side of the clumps just to give us some believable light occurring also on the right hand side of the bushes very simple we want but we don't want to sort of have them as dead clumps because it would lie be a lie then about the light in the clouds wouldn't it we've got to be faithful and consistent with our light source in the painting okay so I'm get, getting too fiddly now and I purposely want to wipe a bit more of this out because I don't want this strong line I would like the line between the green and the blue to blur a little bit more so that we've got what I was talking about earlier those um, lost and found edges so take a th um, take a flat brush that's been moistened and then wiped in a cloth and just wipe away wipe away wash it again rinse it again wipe away and we'll get then almost like a streak of light coming from the left into the front of this field opening perhaps it could be and it, again it adds a nice sort of maybe a touch of light crashing onto the ground if I just zoom into it there see so um, don't be afraid to keep wiping keep rinsing you have to rinse every time and wipe your brush every time and you get this soft blurring between the blue sky and the foreground let's see now right I think overall uh, the, the the trees are still a little bit too hard and edgy for me so I'm going to get a bit of damp tissue so what I'm going to do is get some tissue dip it in my pot of water and now that's damp there okay and then just press in just press in and just lower it yeah that's better just and maybe soften some of the tops a bit more so we want a break a break in the the tree line so that we've got some lost edges of the trees and we want a break in the land line so that we've got a break uh, a fusion between the bottom of the sky and the entry into the field so again I'm going to use my little scrubby brush and scrub away at the sunlit side and top of this bush here so that part of the foliage now is disintegrated into the sky let's do it with this one over here as well just chipping away chipping away chip 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 with this barely barely moist brush so that I don't risk having a back run into the blue sky I'm just chipping away with this barely barely moist this is what you get to know about in watercolour is just how careful you've got to be with that water okay so let's zoom out we're near the end now so before I finish I'm Alison Fennell a pottery and artist and I like to teach watercolour to adults specialise in beginners and I've got an online academy the link for that's in the description below I've also got a free little one hour course on my academy which you can have today called Paints Shiny Spheres. The link to that is in the description as well. And um, I'm here to help you on your watercolour journey. My YouTube channel has got lots of free YouTube videos on it. And then sometimes I do um, a live stream like this where I offer a paid download. You know the sort of the, the pack that you see um, in the link in the description below. It's an eight page pack with all the photographs and the step-by-steps for this tutorial. So I do some free work and then I do some, some paid work so that people can access it at different levels and, and for, at different stages on the watercolour journey. So I'm peeling away now the, water, um, the masking tape because I like to see a nice crisp edge when I finish the painting. 
and I peel it slowly and keep it close because otherwise you know it could tear could tear into the painting so I think when this yellow tape has gone you know you can get a better handle on on how your painting is looking overall this was a sky tutorial to show you how you can uh, paint a basic white cloud mass with some blue surround then stop and dry that and then re-wet the whole painting and then only drop in shadows on the white area <clears throat> and so you end up with a soft fused style a soft fused and blurry look around your clouds okay so there's the finished uh, live stream for today let me just bring back the um, the printouts to show you. This is what you can have if you feel you need the extra support of um, a printable download. You can choose to have this as a Word document or as a PDF. And it's eight pages. And there we are. There's the photographs. Because I did this yesterday of all the steps with my text text underneath telling you how to, how to do it. So between this um, handout there's the outline as well and there are more links educational links for you and there's the photograph plus you'll get the the tonal map that i've been using which i found so useful you know because i'm looking at this now and, and you can see can't you if i just zoom out a bit you see there's the darker area there and there's the darker area there and there's that white piece behind there's the white piece behind so i use this as my as my road map and it's very helpful because there's no color in that point so i hope you've enjoyed this thanks for watching and it's lovely to not have any sound problems jim isn't it and jenny like we did about two weeks ago so i hope jenny and jim are still there watching and i hope you've got something from this are you going to go away now and do some watercolour? Have you got any watercolour projects on? Anybody? Uh, I'm available on email at um, thepotterinartist at hotmail.com if anybody wants to chat to me about watercolour or you want any um, advice or information about any of my courses and how they will help you on your watercolour journey, please get in touch with me, okay? So now it's about half past four. So that was that was an hour and a half. I think that's enough, isn't it? That's enough uh, attention. That's enough time to be painting for. I don't paint for longer than an hour and a half at a time myself. Because um, it's quite mental, isn't it, watercolour? It's quite mentally demanding. All right. So just to remind you of my free little course as well. My watercolour spheres course. Find that now. Oh, here it is. If you want to get that free painting spheres course today, it's available to you. Hiya, Jane. Lovely to see you. Were you were you watching all along, Jane? I hope you were. Anyway, this will be available um, as a you know re record pre recording later on today. You can watch it again. Okay, um, so you'll get that, Jane. I hope you really enjoy looking at it. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, so Glad you enjoyed it. Thanks for your thumbs up. Ah, uh, thank you, Jenny, as well. So you've got a painting on your desk of sky studies. Okay, so you're going to look for the magazine, right, and I'll be getting today's PDF. Thank you, Jenny. Well, I hope all, all the input that I give in paper form or video form helps you enjoy your watercolour even more all right and thank you jim it's been lovely to have a live, a live stream that works <laughs> i'm also scared of doing them anymore now I, I might do you know i might do them more often i said today i said if this doesn't work i'm giving up on live streams i'm just going to re-record them put them up and have an easy life but this has gone well and i hope you, the image has been clear for everybody has it and you said that the sound is okay. So as long as you've had a clear image as well, that's my concern. BAE, thank you for your thank you. It's been lovely to have you all there. Um, just one thing, if anybody feels like donating, this is not obligatory, by the way, but if you did want to know about this, if you look at the bot, uh, right at the bottom of the chat screen where you've been typing your messages, there's a little smiley face and there's a little dollar sign. 
If you click on the dollar sign, you can donate to me. You don't have to, but if you do, I'll buy a nice cake and a cup of tea or maybe some gin with it. But anyway, um, that's there for you. If you feel you've benefited from it and you want to donate, it's not obligatory, as I say. Um, so lovely to lovely to talk to, lovely to be with you all. And uh, that's great, Jane, to hear that. I'm glad you were there all along. And so I'll see you on Facebook, Jane Ross, with your next bit of work from the landscape course, maybe. <laughs> OK, and see House Press. Oh, Valerie. Hiya, Valerie. Yes, you did buy the, the, the download pack, didn't you? I hope that it'll all make sense now. Are you going to go and have a go of it yourself? I'm glad you enjoyed the lesson, Valerie. Thank you. <clears throat> I'm just going to zoom out of that now. So, yeah, so that's that's the one I've done today. And this is the one I did yesterday. So a bit, a bit different, aren't they? A bit different. So there's that one. And there's that one. I like them for different reasons. But I think just playing around with cloud shapes... Is good practice for us watercolorists because it teaches us all the skills you need for watercolor day in day out right being able to soften an edge without causing a back run being able to correct color um, by re-wetting the whole page etc so I hope that's uh, been enjoyable I've enjoyed painting it for you because I've got a similar cloudy sky out of my attic window Perhaps I can just, let me just unplug my camera and show you the view, view out of my window, right? Because it's, it's, it's been quite similar. In fact, it's been a little bit cloudier. The, the cloud shapes have gone a bit now. Let me just show you. Can you see Can you see that? Can you see the clouds? They were much more formed early on. And that's the view out of my window onto the... Uh, uh, on to the Welsh, lovely Welsh hills. We've got a lovely little village here. This is Anisabul, where I live. Okay. Right. Okay. Oh, thanks for that. Oh, thanks for that, uh, a Valerie donation. That's very kind of you. Thanks ever so much. I really appreciate that. Right. Uh, that's really lovely. So there we are. I'm filming my cap now. Um, oh, and thanks. Somebody's bought the um, somebody's bought the the download pack as well, which is really kind. Yeah, so it's been really good. I I love communicating about watercolor, and no matter how simplistic your question might be, if you've got any questions about watercolor, or if you want, you know, like a pep talk via email on how to get going or, or where you'd like to go with it. Uh, I can be there for you for that because uh, I think a lot of obstacles in watercolour are mostly can be just mental obstacles can't they so uh, I'm around for that via email and these live streams and what, what I might do now because I've been successful with this little live stream is I might just um, slip into one one day you know without announcing it so much and just um, I'll be just going through basic watercolour techniques and people can catch that as they go past or not sort of come day go day sort of quite um uh, sort of non-committal but it'll be there just going over the basic watercolour techniques again because as you know uh you know it's a very technical um medium right um Valerie, you like the village then, yeah? Oh, it is This is a lovely donation. Thank you ever so much. Um, yes. Um, let's have a look. And a, a paid, paid consult. Okay. Right, my email, Valerie, it's in the description of the video, but I can tell you again, it's thepotteringartist at hotmail.com. Okay. Um, actually, I'll type it. I'll type it, Valerie. Here we go. Let me type it in here. So, the pottering artist at hotmail.com. I've just typed it in, Valerie. All right. There we go. That's, that's my email. Oh, I've made a mistake on. 
artist it should be the pottering artist and made a typo Valerie in there I think let me kind of do it the pottering artist that's better at hotmail.com yeah and we can chat then Valerie about what you want okay pottering artist that's better okay everybody so uh, if you have got any projects on and you like to share them I've got a Facebook page um, again if you send me an email via my email I've just put there I can send you the link to my Facebook page I'm actually called Alison Fennell on Facebook and my business page is called The Pottering Artist Okay, so you can find me there and people share, you know, their work and things that they're doing and stuff like that. Okay. So I'll just wait here a little minute to see if anybody wants to ask anything um, or say anything uh, following the demo. Okay, I'll just wait here a few little minutes. Um, let's see here now. Just I'll, I'll put this on the uh, the free course so that you can people can see that if they are wanting to do the free course. Here are the details for that, everybody. Ah, uh, okay, Jim. See you soon, and I'm glad you enjoyed it. I'm going to think about uh, what I'm going to do for my next demonstration. Now I've 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 got about twenty subjects that I want to pick all things that I really want to paint so I'll be doing those and tele televising one or two of those intermittently okay thanks everybody So if Jenny is uh, Jenny Hunt is still there, so you bought the magazine, Jenny, did you? Um, because when somebody buys my thank you for that. Because when somebody buys my magazine, I don't actually know who buys it because Blurb handles all the d details. So apologies if I can't, can't thank you, but I don't know who buys them. I hope you enjoy it with a nice cup of tea and your feet up, and I hope it um, encourages the inner artist in you to go your own way, right? And uh, thanks for buying today's PDF. If you if you go and go ahead and buy that. Okay, let's see now. I'm just keeping this on the free course so people can have a look at it. <laughs> hmm. there you go okay everybody I'm going to sign off now so thank you for watching enjoy your watercolour and I'll see you in the next one lastly if you subscribe to my channel ah uh, hi Sue great i'm glad you enjoyed it i know you've got all my magazines that's really kind and uh, another lady mariana said that it's the only magazine she actually reads from cover to cover so i was really uh you know flattered by that um so last before i go now if you subscribe to my channel click the red button that says subscribe and then you must click the little gray bell as well in order to get notifications about new videos because if you don't click that you won't get told uh, when I'm going live or when I put a new video up okay so so please do that it's a two-part thing you have to do in order to get uh, to get my alerts and everything right Susan I'm gonna go now and make a cup of tea and have a biscuit thanks everybody for watching I really appreciate your company
I'm going to end the stream now, okay? And um, today or early tomorrow, you'll see the video upload. Uh, there'll be two of them. There'll be this live stream and there'll be the cloud video practice piece that I did yesterday. So you'll have two cloud tutorials on watercolour to practice from. All right. Bye for now.